This video discusses how to install the Biogram 4002 command or remote control. There is a separate video that introduces the functions and demonstrates its use. For more information, please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or visit my website at www.biolover.com. This here shows the Biogram commander board. The board plugs in directly into the keyboard connector on the main PCB. The keyboard plug goes into this header that is mounted on the commander board. This allows to preserve full functionality of the keyboard. The infrared receiver feeds between the plinth and the enclosure. That enables to expose the receiver to the exterior so it can receive the signals from the remote control. Okay, before we get going, there are a couple of precautions we need to take. And one is, of course, to unplug the biogram. The other item, of course, is to protect your cartridge. So carefully unplug it and put it in a safe place. Okay, now we're ready to do the installation. The first step is to remove the aluminum panels. The aluminum panels are locked in place by the plinth. They can be unlocked by pulling the plinth forward. For that you grab it in the back and you push it forward. Sometimes it can be difficult to move the plinth forward if that's the case in your biogram, then it's time to turn it around and have a look at these tabs here. These tabs are meant to lock the plinth in place, but over time they typically wear out. So if they're still in force, you need to push them out with a screwdriver and then you can push the plinth forward. Okay, now it's time to remove the small panel. The small panel is removed by lifting it up on the outside and then pulling it out. And now we can remove the large one. And now we can take the platter out. The subplatter we can leave in. Now it's time to remove the keypad connector. The commander board is being held in place using this screw and so for that purpose we need to take it out. And now it's time to install the commander board. So the important points in this initial stage of the installation are to make sure that the ribbon cable that connects the infrared receiver, that that goes between the plint and the enclosure, and also that it is in this gap here uh, in the enclosure. And the other point is that the board is underneath this fixture that holds the uh, aluminum platter in place. The next step is to insert the header into the keyboard jack on the main PCB. The crucial item here is to make sure that the pins are really properly lined up. The reason for that is the commander board receives its power through this plug and so if you would plug it in one pin over, severe damage could occur to the board. So you need to make sure that this pin really goes into the first receptacle of this jack down here. I recommend using a strong light source so you can see what is going on down there. Once the pins are lined up properly, the board can be pushed in and that should work without too much force. After the board has been pushed down, please check whether the bolt hole is really in the center of this circular cutout in the board and whether you have about one millimeter distance between the board enclosure and the suspension spring of the turntable. The next step is to put the mounting plug into the circular orifice and for that we need to insert the screw into that mounting plug. And now it's time to insert that plug and bolt it down. If everything is aligned properly this should go without much fuss. And that's it. The final task is to put the keyboard plug into the header on the commander board. Okay, now we can put the aluminum panels back in. It's important that you orient it the right way that this copper tab is facing towards the uh, small uh, aluminum panel.
Now it's time to put in the smaller panel. There are two things we need to keep in mind while doing that. One is that here is this uh, copper guiding tab and that needs to mate with one of the two protrusions on that smaller panel. And while we guide it in here, we need to make sure that the panel goes on top of this copper strip that is mounted on the larger panel. So we slide it in from the side using this guiding mechanism. And then when it's seated here, we put it down here and on the outside. So we see that now. So here you see these two protrusions. And the one up front needs to go into the guiding mechanism. And then using a finger, you guide it on top of the copper strip and then seat it. Okay, now it's time to push the plinth back to lock the uh, plates in place. And typically this should uh, go fairly smoothly. Sometimes you have to press down the uh, plate slightly to really uh, keep these protrusions uh, inside these guiding mechanisms that are on the uh, plinth. One thing to keep in mind is to make sure that the remote control receiver is properly seated here and that it really uh, uh, extends below the uh, plinth. This shows how the remote control receiver should be seated once the installation is complete. The ribbon cable is a little bit longer than necessary, so it may be required to push the receiver up a few millimeters in order to get it real close to the plinth to minimize its visibility. Once the receiver is properly aligned, you can put the main platter back on and plug in the biogram and play your first record with the remote control. It should start right up. This concludes my video about the installation of the Biogram 4002 Commander. For a full demo, please check out my other video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.